Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, and this is episode 677 of the Lots Project podcast, and it's titled Giving Credit Where It's Due, and I'll give, be giving props to our friends up north talking about a potential new business relationship, cracking up about Gordon Ramsay on Kitchen Nightmares, and much more. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's check out who's over in the live chat. Grab a cup of coffee, hang out for an hour, and see what comes up. Thank you for joining me so far this morning. If you're over on the vertical feed over on YouTube in the shorts reel, definitely hit that uh, hit that follow and that like and leave a comment over there. Just getting housekeeping done here real quick to get started up, and then we will hit that live chat. Make sure everything is rounded up here and I'm not missing anything. I was telling Tim the other day that uh, I do this on a laptop and he thought I was insane. So I am really looking forward to getting multiple screens because he says it's way easier. <laughs> but let's do it. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Pip in early. Good morning. And let there be tacos for Taco Tuesday. Today is Tuesday for Taco Tuesday. Um we might do tacos tonight. Might do tacos tonight. Good morning, Rewilder Life. Already at work. Woo, woo. Getting up and getting at it. Way to go. Pip and uh, Pip checking in again. And Pickle Pete, North Pacific Northwest. Good morning, Pickle Pete. Hunter, good morning. And Pete says he loves tacos. I love all varieties of tacos. I like like real authentic Mexican tacos. I like the fake ones that uh, that we make here in the U.S. and everything in between. So, gotta love that taco. Gotta love that taco. Um, anyway, what do I have in the cup today? We got the last of the silver bullet blend. I shouldn't say the last of it. I might have it tomorrow. It was uh, it was feeling pretty pretty heavy. The bag was feeling pretty heavy this morning. I think I got more to do. Um, definitely. God, guys, it's a uh, it's a interesting morning around here. I got uh, I got these weird bugs. Um, they're like kind of maybe early stage mosquito, little tiny mosquito. I don't know if they came in when the when the dogs came in or what, but it's like it's flying in between the camera here and and the screen. So anyway, uh, silver bullet blend this morning. Got enough left at least for another one today, and probably another today and tomorrow. But I don't know if I'll be uh, I'll be having another one today. I'm gonna be heading out to Delinquent Scully this morning to spend a, a work day out with uh, Toolman Tim, working on his cabin, probably humping uh, humping uh, materials up the hill, and maybe getting a little building done. But I don't know if that'll leave time. Um, I don't know if that will leave time for another French press this morning. But maybe since Pickle Pete down there sent out C four package yesterday and it looks like he says i got bonus coffee coming inbound gotta love the bonus coffee good morning good morning wired edge workshop thanks for stopping in appreciate it uh anybody over there on the vertical feed i see one person watching leave a comment over there let me know you're there hit that like and i appreciate it if you could share it also that'd be fantastic uh noster jim jim where are you nobody over on noster so um anyway let's move on a little bit and get into it get rolling <laughs> it's warm here guys warm this morning uh got warm yesterday and uh, stayed warm overnight and i think we're at the tip of the iceberg for uh a little warm weather coming up uh gotta think back about a year when we got a year ago when we got here it got pretty warm pretty quick um so here it comes here it comes i think we'll have some ups and downs and uh, we'll have some definitely warm days. I think we're pushing 90 on Thursday coming up. So Pickle Pete's wondering where Jim and K-Bonk are. I, uh, Jim is my steadfast Noster listener over there. Always, uh, always a comment and a zap if he's around. But I don't see him there this morning. Uh, other than that, I get quite a few lurkers there on Noster. And then uh, uh, intermittent 
intermittent interaction there. So it's uh, it's Jim. It's Jim. And K Bonk in when he's normally in on the on the YouTube side. So um, let's hit the list here. Let me hit my list. I got it in order of uh, when I th- how I should bring it up. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about my day yesterday and just in general, and then some other things that happened. But man, yesterday I've had them before. I've mentioned them on the show before. I know I have, but you know those days that are just a little off, like uh like 10 degrees off maybe not degrees as in temperature but degrees as in you knock everything fucking over when you try to pick it up everything you set down will fall over everything you touch turns to shit um i lost something and i was looking for it and i couldn't find it it was never it wasn't anywhere i was looking my beautiful wife knew exactly where it was and told me as soon as i uh as soon as I asked her after I tore my room apart and moved everything around. And when you live in a small space like this, when you're looking for something, you literally have to move everything in circles um, as you're looking for stuff. So I kind of spent the morning uh, running in circles, uh, knocking things over, making a mess, cleaning it up back and forth. And I was like, oh, my God, this is uh, this is one of those days. This is just one of those days that happens like that. And I um, I was making it through the morning. I finally found what I was looking for. Uh, it was uh, one of my mics, one of my new lavalier mics. I actually put the video out for it last night. Um, I had left it clipped to a sweatshirt, and when I went to use it to make the videos yesterday, my videos I was recording yesterday. I opened up the package and I, I looked and it was gone. And I'm like, what the hell? It must have fallen off my desk because I had it sitting there when I was uh, I was doing some live feeds. And um, so I figured it had fallen off the desk. So I'm shuffling through the stuff I have there. And then I'm like, oh, maybe it fell in somewhere else. And so I'm like tearing through everything. And Corey's like, you probably left it clipped to your sweatshirt. Yeah, it was in my laundry bag clip to the sweatshirt still it was like literally she asked me if it was if i looked on the sweatshirt and i was like no i walked into my room it was under a minute hunter says yeah but did you find anything else? actually i did <laughs> funny you mentioned that funny you mentioned that i did find something else i did find something else that i knew that i knew had fallen off my desk um Oh, it had fallen off my desk, um, something else a few days earlier. And I knew it was there. Uh, I just had to like move the stuff kind of, it was a, it was a pen, um, not, not just a normal pen, but, uh, construction refillable lead pen. And it had rolled off, rolled off the table and fallen down in between a crate I had there. And so I knew that was down there. So yeah, while I was looking, I pulled the uh, pulled that out and grabbed the pen that I just hadn't gotten. I knew it was there, and so I had to do it anyway. So thanks for looking on the bright side, Hunter. Uh, if that was the end of it, if that was uh, if that was the end of it, I uh, I wish it had been. But I I had a bunch of videos I wanted to get recorded yesterday. Yesterday was intent on content creation because Tim's in town, like I said, for a limited amount of time. I want to get him some help. I want to get out there, spend some time with him, help him get his uh, his goals accomplished before he wants to leave. And I uh, and so I was like rushing around. There was six or seven videos I wanted to get recorded and then get some edited and um, and kind of get the week set up so I can I can focus on other things the rest of the week. Well, I spent like all morning, like I said, looking for the the um, the mic and then. I go outside. I finally get outside. I'm like probably two, two hours behind where I wanted to be. I start setting everything up to do the videos. And I think yesterday might have been our town's day that they're supposed to mow their lawn. Like I, I, it wasn't like it rained for three weeks straight. And then there was a nice day. Um, it doesn't, uh, it didn't, it, it, uh, I, yeah. Six. I counted six different people mowing their lawns. Well, it was actually five, but somebody was mowing with two mowers. 
and it's hard to record video outside when people are mowing their lawns next door and i'm just like oh really okay so i kind of take my time and i was waiting for people to wrap up i kind of waited it out as much as i could i uh, the nearest ones were at least done and i start to record a video and no shit as soon as i hit record the wind starts whipping up and i'm like i I get i guess this isn't gonna happen today this isn't gonna happen today i was losing my mind like if you if you asked Corey to describe me for about the first four hours of my day yesterday, she'd be like he was a, a an absolute insane madman. I was just like losing my shit. Everything I was doing was falling to shit. Everything I touched was falling to shit. I couldn't get anything right. I'm stepping like the dog came in. In the meantime, Walter had breakfast and like dropped dog food all over the floor uh, while he was eating. So every time I would walk through the camper, I get dog food stuck to my foot and like. It, everything was just going bad, but I persevered. I persevered. I, uh, I ended up getting the videos recorded. I waited long enough. I made it work, got those recorded, came in, had a nice afternoon with Corey. Um, good morning, backwoods butcher. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, wired edge says something here. It says, uh, seems it doesn't matter how much you downsize stuff still gets lost in a black hole. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. I am super motivated to get to a point where I have a spot for everything. Um, when we started this journey, we really didn't know what we what we had. Well, we had, knew what we had. We didn't know what we wanted to keep. We really didn't know what we really needed functionally. I've added some things. We've kind of changed where we set up in the camper. Um, gone from having a shared office space in the middle to uh, separate office spaces in our, our bedrooms on the ends. And um, so it needs to be shuffled. Corey's got a handle on her stuff. It's fantastic. I, I love her room. I love the setup. I love how she's doing things and making it work. Uh, good morning, Gen G. Thanks, uh, thanks for swinging over there on the on the vertical feed. Appreciate that. Um, and so she's got it figured out. She's she's gone to all bag storage, SOE bags. She she has her clothes, all her stuff. She has ev- everything is in bags, like grab and go. <coughs> and I absolutely love the setup. So I'm gonna kind of drive towards that. But if if everything you have has a place, it's really hard for things to get lost. It's my issue right now is I'm shuffling things. And it's a lot because I'm getting a lot of items in to do videos, which is kind of an income stream, which I kind of have to have to keep doing this. So it's something I have to deal with in the short term. Uh, eventually, I'm hoping to have a space to be doing this, uh, a space to be recording uh, doing lives, doing product reviews, having all the stuff. Like I'm hoping it has its own dedicated space um, and and tying that into a minimalist thing. So, mm, yeah, I agree with you. Um, you downsize and you still lose shit. Like if it's a pencil or a Sharpie or a tape measure, it's just gone, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, I persevered. I persevered. I got through it. Ended up getting the videos recorded. Um, and then that was, uh, that was the next thing I had on my list. Um, after my day got, was so bad and I don't even know why I thought that this would be a good idea yesterday, but, uh, I did, I know I went, I went for it. I've been working a relationship here in town for a while. Uh, you guys know the, the bar owner, the, the gas station owner, um, I don't want to say I've been working the relationship. I've been building community, building relationships with people, uh, interacting, uh, learning, helping, doing what I can um, to build social credit, I guess would be the term. But um, <laughs> Backwoods Butcher says, uh, I don't think the tape measure are solid matter. You put them down and they just evaporate. That can be true. That can be true. Uh, So anyway, as I've been fostering this relationship, I've been kind of observing the the products they sell at their gas station and um, thinking, always thinking, always thinking. Uh, And if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, you know that uh, Corey and I started making paracord bracelets, paracord keychains and things like that to have products to put on our vendor table at SRF. 
Well, we did all right with them at SRF. We we sold some. Uh, we didn't sell them all by any means. And our goal, our our kind of plan when we got back was to uh, get them listed on Etsy and sell them on Etsy and passively have them listed. We have a stockpile enough that we could go on a run. Um, I mean, a pretty decent run to where we'd have time to make more or do custom orders if if they all happen to sell out. I haven't gone through the motions of making the listings, making Etsy listings and making listings for that many items is it's, it's a chore. It takes some time. Um, uh, and it's, uh, there's other focus right at the moment. So I was getting around to it. It's on my list to do, to get them up there, but I was thinking of other ways to sell them. And I, I put two and two together the other day. I was like, well, I should just ask if they want to sell them at the gas station. Um, there's plenty of room in those keychains for two people to make a profit, to make a decent profit. Uh, I came up with a number. I came up, uh, I came up with a, uh, amount like a stock bulk amount. I guess you'd call it a bulk amount, minimum order, uh, with a g- good price to where they had room to mark them up and, and hang them. And the other day I was just driving by and I, I stopped in and I said, Hey, I talked to uh, one of the owners there. I said, I said, hey, you uh, interested in selling some paracord keychains that that my wife and I make? And then she's like, well, what do you mean? What are they? And I had one on my keys and I was like, ah, oh, this, this, this. And she was she was kind of busy. She was making pizzas. And um, she's like, yeah, we could probably do that. Didn't talk about money. Didn't talk about anything. Nothing. I was like, OK, cool. I'll uh, I'll see you early in the week. I'll grab, I'll get some, I'll bring some in, let you see. So yesterday at the end of my absolutely horrific day of, um, of everything going sideways, I thought it was a brilliant idea to, uh, to grab a bunch of them, to grab my uh, bundle that I put together for, uh, to try to get them to buy and roll down there and be like, Hey, here, here's the product. Well, I did. I grabbed them. I, uh, I went to get the mail. I went to get, uh, I went to get some, some, pick up some uh some beef i had waiting for me and uh grabbed the mail went to the gas station walked in i said here you go here's the keychain she says those are fantastic how much are they and i told her and she handed me the money and i walked out (laughs) didn't go sideways like i had uh, i had anticipated with uh, the way my morning had been going but uh, that is really exciting. I'm hoping that it, with summer coming through and boat traffic and everything, people um, will like those. I, I, I kind of talked her through what I was thinking for price point for her. Um, and uh, yeah, so sold a bundle of 25. I have um, more bundles of 25 and I, I, I regularly stop in there. And she said, yeah, let's start with one. And uh, if they sell, we'll, we'll go more. Um, I think I might just try that around here locally until I'm out of them. And uh, if they go fast, then we'll make more. If not, we sold them uh, because there is enough room, like I said, for for me to get mine and someone else to get theirs. So that's really cool. We appreciate it. Appreciate them picking those up and hanging them up. She was already getting them out displayed before I was out the door. So I think she's excited and uh, I'm excited. So Potential partnership there and uh, and an outlet for some products. So you never know. I uh, I wanted to just sit down and go back to bed. I, I literally told Corey a couple times that I was just going to lay it down and go back to bed uh, and start again just because it was one of those days. But man, you never know. You never know. And that kind of turned the corner for me for the day. The rest of the day was really nice. Uh, spent the spent the afternoon when Corey got home or when Corey got off of work. Spend some time with her. Watch some uh, watch some new some new show in the evening to kind of settle down since we finished Lost. And um, yeah, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, the way the title was laid out today, that's my next topic. That is my next topic for sure. Let me check these comments here before we move on. Thanks, Jen, for the congratulations. Um, Mike's Homestead says they'll sell at the gas station within the next month. Happened to me with selling honey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it is definitely a gas station item. I'm just, I'm curious their, uh, their volume of customers, like how many eyes are going to be on there. 
um uh, i know what their gas sales are and um yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see and there's plenty of other mom and pop gas stations between like within uh i would say 30 miles of here if i drove in a circle uh there are plenty of mom and pop gas stations it's it seems to be the mo the norm rather than the exception here um that they're locally owned mom and pop where you can talk to the person making the decision walk in the door the owners there or the owners in the office in the back so that is um that is ideal when you're not having to work with a corporate um like a general manager a manager we got to run it up the chain and see if we can sell your product on the counter so there's a lot of that opportunity around here which is really cool We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. It's not a ton of money. It's um, and I would say, I would say with the bulk pricing, we're probably a little low from where we'd want to be. But these um, these um, these are what we do. We were like doing them in our spare time, like while we were watching Lost. Corey's pounding out keychains. So these are kind of um. A trickle afterthought now i don't want to cut us short like i don't want us making uh i don't want us to be like child sweatshop labor where we're making pennies on the hour but they are uh i mean i'm sure there's other things that we could focus on to make more money but it's like a it's like one of those little extra things little extras so we'll see how it goes i mean and if it goes well and they sell well obviously they're priced too low and or maybe <laughs> pickle p says we all want retail dollars but wholesale is wholesale for a reason right right they have to make theirs and i and that's the thing is like when you understand that and when you think about it in those terms like they got to make their cut too like their their counter space is is valuable their time is valuable they're paying their employees to ring those up like i get all the things that go into those and i think about my costs and i think about my time and Corey's time uh and then i think about their costs and i'm like we all need to make something on it we all need to and they also need to sell they also need to be priced right for the customer so it is what it is. We'll see. A lot of little streams rolling into one. A lot of little streams rolling into one. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm paid. That's that's the best part. I got paid for 25. She handed me the money. I walked out. I handed Corey when I got home because she gets the she gets the money. She gets the money. <laughs> um anyway let's uh move on like i said to the title of today's show i gotta give credit where uh, credit is due for sure um uh, it's been a while uh, i've had a chance to evaluate things i've had a chance to walk through it but uh when we were at srf mr uh, mr cook and mrs cook have uh these wonderful twin daughters that came down uh that's Toolman and becky cook if you didn't know uh, they have these wonderful uh, twin daughters that came down to SRF this year. I was I was so excited to meet them. Corey, what are they, 14? 14 years old. Um, and took the entrepreneurial spirit to buy absolute boatload of uh, Canadian treats. Uh, the majority of them, almost all of them, were, were things that you could only get in Canada. Not allowed in the U.S., some because of some interesting reasons that we went through we were talking about while we were there <laughs> but mostly mostly um candy bars potato chips nothing good for you absolutely nothing good for you and that's okay that's okay um tim and uh tim and becky have, have done an awesome job with their with their girls and uh they were a big hit there they were selling products like crazy uh, and it came to the end of the event and they had some stuff left. And Becky looked at me and Corey and she's like, hey, uh, I'm going to send the, send one of these each home for you. And I want you to have them and I want you to eat them and remember what your favorites are. So 
man, if you ever need a, if you ever need a, um, a care package or we're coming back down, I know, I know what you like from, from Canada. And I'm like, Oh God, this is going to go really well. Um, new, new source of addiction. And I won't even be able to get it unless I, I, I call my dealer up in Canada. Um, so I, uh, we took him home and I have the worst sweets, uh, cravings that you'd ever, you'd ever know. Like, I can sit down and eat a box of cookies, a pile of candy bars. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's been that way my whole life. And so I was um, I was impressed with how long it took me to eat all these, these treats that she sent, these candy bars. But we noticed uh, a couple of things. Corey and I noticed a couple of things. I have to give credit to Canada. Their, their chocolate bars, their... Um, their chocolate they use, whatever ingredients they use, are a hundred percent better than the stuff you get in the United States. Now, when I was a kid, well, I guess I shouldn't say kid, when I was in my late teens and early 20s, we always knew that the beer in Canada was better, uh, higher alcohol content, same beer. So, Labatt Blue, Labatt Blue, um. Labatt Blue was better. It was higher alcohol content. It tasted better when it was from Canada. Um, so the beer's better. But man, the chocolate bars, the, the, what was the one thing? What were they called? Hickory sticks? Yeah. Hickory sticks. These things are fantastic. If you've never had those, if you've never been to Canada and had hickory sticks, <laughs> good, good on you because that's all you would eat. Um, but the, the candy bars, the chocolate tasted better, the, the flavors of like the flavoring of the thing. So like we, my, one of my favorites that I got was called a caramel. I don't know. They're kind of like caramellos if you know them. Uh, but the caramel was better. The chocolate was better. Everything was better. And I think they use like real sugar or something. I don't know. I don't know what the difference was, but they just tasted better. The other thing Corey and I noticed was the ingredients list. The ingredients list on the Canadian products was extremely short. It was extremely short. <laughs> Jen G says Labatt's was great. Have you ever had Labatt's from Canada? Like um, in Canada as opposed to the in the United States? It's like two different worlds. Um, but yeah. lost it. <laughs> yeah, the ingredients list was way smaller and I could pronounce everything on it. I I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's um better or worse. We weren't, I was trying to figure out if uh, some of the things were like lumped into one, one description. Um, I was hoping to have some Canadian folks in here, but uh, I didn't know if maybe, you know, when they do flavoring or fragrance or something like that, um, I don't know if they like lump the crappy stuff into a generic term. I don't know. Revile their life says, and this is why we're fat here. Sugar is bad, but the crap we put in is so much worse. Right. Right. Uh, if you, I mean, sugar in itself, like if you really think about it, if we roll back and we say, okay, we are refined sugar is bad. <laughs> um, People ate fruit. There's sugar in fruit. I think we're talking refined sugar. That's, yeah, anything refined. And the more refined and the more chemically, the worse it is. If you just step back and think about it, the more we fuck around with nature, the more we fuck around with ingredients, the more we do to them, the worse they become for us. And why are we eating things that we can't eat without processing? Like, did we as a human just say all of a sudden, 
we aren't supposed to eat that, but if we do this thing to it, we can gobble it down and it's good for us. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be like that. But anyway, I do have to give props to the Canadians. They uh, they do make a hell of a candy bar. They do make a hell of a hell, hell of a snack to sit down and eat. Um, they did have these one things that they sent with us that is probably one of the most Canadian things that I've ever uh, that I've ever come across. I don't know about the most Canadian, but it was a package of they were called maple cookies. Go figure. Everybody knows Canada is famous for their maple syrup. They all love the maple syrup. Uh, these were maple cookies, and I was like, "All right." So they looked like um, they looked like oh, I guess Oreos, but they were oh, like the peanut butter cookies, the peanut butter nutter butter cookies. Have if you ever seen those with the the two cookies and then the cream filling? Well, these were maple. They were maple cookies with maple maple filling, and literally, I opened them up. I set them on the table and I could smell them almost across the room. They were so strong. I brought one to my mouth and I put it in my mouth and I tasted it. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most maple flavored thing I've ever maple syrup flavored. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I'm sitting there smelling it. We're watching a show and all of a sudden I'm like grabbing another one. It's not bad. It's not bad. Next day, package is like three quarters gone. And I'm like, I guess those maple cookies were pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I had a couple favorites. Uh, mainly the arrow bar. Arrow bars were really good. Caramel milks were pretty good. Uh, I liked them. I liked most of them. I liked most of them. There was one that I didn't really like, uh, which is odd for me with a candy bar. But it was some Turkish Turkish delight. Some weird shit. Uh, basically, you know when you get uh, you know when you get a box of chocolates like around uh, Valentine's Day, and there's that one that's like it's not quite raspberry, but it's like a chewy, um, a chewy mm, syrupy type. Mm, it's not syrup it's solid ish uh and stretchy and gooey and you bite into it and you're like man i really wish that had been chocolate cream or something like that or coconut uh and it's not necessarily the best uh it's better than like the orange crappy one but the that that uh, raspberry red one i don't even know what the flavor is but that was a whole candy bar of that and i tried it i took a bite like mm, not necessarily my favorite. Um, oh, it's fig. Is that what that is? Oh, maybe dates. What do you think, Corey? Was that fig or dates? It might have been one of the two. Uh, it might have been one of the two. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was about the length of a Charleston chew. <laughs> and I was like, I got about halfway through it. And I don't know, Corey, in your lifetime with me, have you ever noticed me not finish a candy bar? <laughs> it's a first for everything. First for everything. But yeah, uh, I only finished half of it and it went away. That won't that won't be on the care package list for sure. Kyle said my wife's cousin. My wife's cousin. It's got to be a joke there somewhere. Made whipped maple syrup up at the sugar house a few weeks ago. It was so good. All right. <coughs> what is the sugar house? Oh, you guys, you guys are in, uh, you guys are in syrup season there. Now nah, it's probably a little late, huh? Whipped maple syrup. Hmm. Is that? So does that go on something? Do you eat it with spoon? What is the what is the mo with whipped maple syrup, Kyle? Um, <laughs> God, pickle Pete says they're selling flavored nitrous canisters now, only for making your flavored whipped cream, folks. Uh, maybe maple whipped cream will be a thing. 
I uh, definitely could see maple whipped cream being a thing. Uh, after after experiencing the the craziness at a at a coffee shop, a specialty coffee shop, definitely have uh, maple, maybe mint whipped cream, mm, cocoa, mocha whipped cream. Yeah, there's definitely uh, definitely room for that for sure, and uh, market up huge. Um, so yeah, thanks Canada. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, um, uh, Alice and Charlotte and thanks Becky and Tim for providing me with bad things for me. And, uh, I enjoyed the shit out of them. So <laughs> no harm, no harm. And, uh, it will be, I told Corey, if I, I, if I really focus in and get, get in the groove to be in shape when Tim comes down for srf in the fall he could bring me a care package of candy bars and it should last me through spring like i count if i count the weeks and maybe i can have one one canadian candy bar a week and that would work out well uh, so all right let's swing through the comments here see who's hanging out uh vertical feed labats was good last message thanks jen i appreciate that um all caught up over there and over on Noster, I don't know if Jim swung in yet. Nope, nobody. Anybody over on Noster, please drop a comment there so I know you're watching it and I know to keep popping over to that tab. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. It's on the list here, Canadian treats. Um, oh, all right. I told you guys yesterday that we wrapped up... Um, <laughs> Biff says, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to eat more candy. Uh, if if I got down to one candy bar a week, that would not be more candy. Actually, I shouldn't say. Well, yeah, uh, on average. I can go a week, two weeks, but man, when the, when the levy breaks, <laughs> they're all gone. They're just all gone. Um, the, uh, yeah. So one a week would be phenomenal. And one a week, if it's like actually sugar and not chemicals, I would like, I would actually, I would actually call that a win. Morning, Cormac. Thanks for stopping. I appreciate it. Uh, next on the list, I, <laughs> we stopped, we finished Lost. I shouldn't say we stopped watching Lost. We did stop watching Lost. And then we circled back and watched the last like five episodes because it was getting kind of screwy. It was getting screwy. We both kind of lost interest. And Corey, Corey and I, I, I was like, hey, we should really finish it. We should just, we should follow through and finish it. And she goes, yeah, isn't it, isn't it bad when we've watched five and a half seasons and we don't even give a shit how it ends? <laughs> I knew it was going to be something stupid. Like I knew it was going to be something that I was going to be disappointed with or um, it was going to be a letdown. Yeah, it's like. It's like when you got your uh, you got your high school sweetie and uh, you're not gonna quite get there. Just a, a big letdown. Um, Pip says got lost on lost. That ending was foobard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm hmm. So we finished that on Sunday. Last night we needed something, so when we sat down to have our dinner or uh, to settle down before bed, we had something to watch. And so we've been poking around. We we started watching this a little bit um, when we when we migrated from Lost. When we took a few nights away, we we flipped over to Kitchen Nightmares. I like Gordon Ramsay. I think the, I think the dude's hilarious. Um, I really like kind of like Master Chef. And the very early seasons of Hell's Kitchen, uh, Hell's Kitchen, they the, all the reality, quote unquote, reality, unscripted TV. You can make it about uh, three seasons before they start spinning out of control when people actually realize what's going on. Like when when this when it's new in the first one to two seasons, people are coming on. They don't know what to expect. But as soon as people that are going on the show have seen the show, they start trying. They start acting um and it just gets out of control and then to top the last season it has to be more out of control the next time so we uh 
Master Chef wasn't on there. Uh, we've we pretty much uh, had our fill of Hell's Kitchen, but Kitchen Nightmares is on there, and that can be fun. We watched the early seasons, and we we're kind of over that. We we're we we're just poking around some of the later seasons, just for time killer. Hopefully, this wasn't something that we were going to get where we wanted. We were wanting to watch it. It was more like, uh, yeah. And we have other some other stuff on our list to watch as far as educational and get out of this habit of just mind numbing stuff. But we started. We pulled up uh, Kitchen Nightmares last night. Eh, episode, season five, season six, something like that. Way into it, and. Uh, we're watching it, and the dude's cracking me up. Like, he walks into these places, and basically, they are absolute shitholes. Um, <laughs> Pip, Pip, Pip's still on Lost, wondering how did the blonde girl survive smacking an atomic bomb explosion that was detonated by smacking it with a rock. I kind of wondered the same thing. I had I, I figured it had something to do with time travel. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it got a little wonky. I mean, like literally, Pip, how did um how was there an island? How was there an island with an electromagnetic uh button that you had to press to discharge the like the, the magnetism? <laughs> and when they didn't press the button, it it like sent them back in time i mean we weren't really in reality before the end right <laughs> frame of reference <laughs> anyway we're watching kitchen nightmares and and it's it's kind of cracking me up he the, the dude the uh, gordon ramsay and it, it's gotten he he just rolls with it like I don't think that I don't think he's acting at all. I think that's I think that's really who he is in the in the kitchen. Um, and you see glimpses like when he's at these kitchen nightmare things, like in the heat of the moment, he is he is on fire. Um, but he he's reserved. Like he has a a, a nice side to him. Like and and all of this. But I just love when he goes in and, and tests the food. Uh, at the beginning, like when he's evaluating a restaurant. If you've never seen the show, basically restaurants that are failing, call him to come in and um, help them figure out what's going wrong. And and anybody that's eaten in a restaurant or maybe even seen the outside of a restaurant could look at these establishments and go, this is at least this is what's wrong. It is not hard. These are absolute shitholes that he's going into. Usually there's disgusting food in the cooler and I imagine they probably set it up and it's all, it's kind of rigged and this and that, whatever it's entertainment. But the dude, it just cracks me up with the shit he says. And so last night was no exception. There were a couple ones, but one sticks out in my mind. So he was in an Italian, I believe it was Italian restaurant. We watched a couple episodes last night. They're only like half hour long, 40 minutes or something. And so he's in this Italian restaurant and in, in, when he sits down, he orders like seven different things off the menu. And I looked at Corey at one point, I was like, you know, he could order seven things. He could order the whole, he can order the whole menu and it's not going to matter because he doesn't eat any of it. Like he doesn't have anything come out to him at any of these restaurants where he takes more than one bite. And he's like, yeah, this is okay. Palatable. He's usually spitting it out. Or not even putting it in his mouth, like looking at it. And so, <laughs> I don't know if this was post, um, like if they made these and they never went on TV or what. But he, <laughs> he he's eating, he's eating them off the menu. And the the first thing that comes out is uh, he orders the stuffed banana pepper. He gets the, he, the girl brings it out and she sets it on the table in front of him. And it's like this, it looks like a soupy, um, cheesy mess. Like I was almost like, you know, that looks like shit, but I, I bet it might taste all right. Just because it had so much cheese. Like 
you, when something tastes bad, you just put more cheese on it. You know, that kind of thing. There was sauce. There were banana peppers that looked like they cut the end off and like stuffed them whole. And so he, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of cuts it up. The server standing there kind of waiting for his reaction and he puts it in his mouth. <laughs> And he gets this look on his face like, oh, my God, what did I just do? And he pulls it out of his mouth and he goes. And I hope they aired this on TV without editing it. He says, that was like putting a donkey cock in my mouth. And I was doing something on my phone. And my head snapped up. And I said to Corey. Did he just say he put a donkey cock in his mouth? And the look on the server's face was like, what? And I'm like, how the hell does Gordon Ramsay know what a donkey cock feels like in his mouth? And how did he say that on TV? Because that's fantastic. And sure as shit, I looked at the thing. I can imagine... And I, and I, and I have to say this. I do have never had a donkey cock in my mouth. But if I if I had to imagine what the what the feeling would be like, this strip banana or stuffed banana pepper, spot on, spot on. So that being said, he really didn't like the banana pepper. He really, uh, I think he passed on the banana pepper. He said it was disgusting. Everything else there was disgusting. And then miraculously, in under a week, he had uh, totally remade the whole restaurant re uh redone the interior decor redid the menu retrained the whole staff and now they're a thriving restaurant so let that be a lesson if you're serving donkey cock at your restaurant just call gordon ramsay and you will turn into a thriving italian bistro after the fact uh yeah yeah but Gordon, Gordon really cracks me up. Some of the shit he says. I just kind of wait. I wait for those those uh, shining star moments in any show I watch with him. I know that's the draw. I know that's his hook. But man, really, donkey cock in your mouth, really. Um, next on the list today, I I I missed it yesterday. It was on my list, but it was way down on the bottom, and uh, we got talking about some other stuff. But uh, over the weekend, over the weekend, we had our, um, our, <laughs> the, the annual, um, the annual rendezvous here down the road from us. So it's known kind of across the area here locally as a, as a huge event and what it is. And we had these in Minnesota, but ours were for kind of the the old fur bearer roots the old trappers fur trappers things like that um where they used to gather and do trading post stuff so they would get it get together call it a a, a rendezvous they would do period style dress and and tents and skills and primitive skills we actually went to it and learned how to tan rabbit hides um old school uh, with brain, uh, with brains and uh, bear fat, uh, moisturizer stuff, uh, and using rocks and and all the shit to scrape it. I don't know if they used brains. I don't know if she did. Uh, did Midge use? What's her name? Midge use brains, Corey. Just the bear fat uh, lotion, but. It was a really cool process. She had like a, a primitive setup with uh, the stretcher and and a post for scraping, and it was pretty cool. Uh, but down here, I haven't been to this rendezvous that's like a quarter mile from our house. But from the looks of the equipment going in, and from the looks of the advertisement, I believe it's more a Civil War era rendezvous. Um, so they get together, they do, I believe they do civil war. Sorry, guys, I got a bug itch on my leg. Skeets are coming bad. Um, so they get together, they do reenactment stuff. They do, um, period dress and things like that. And one of the things that they had a lot of in the civil war was cannons. 
And this thing happened like the the weekend, two weekends, I believe, after um after I we got here last year. So we know we've been here a year when this happened again. But when we got here last year, it was a couple weekends after we had been here. All of a sudden, on a Friday, we were looking out the window, and there were fucking trailers driving down the road with cannons on them. Some with cannons, some with people riding on the trailer with the cannons. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? What is going on? Come to find out, this rendezvous was there. So we were prepared. I knew it was coming up. We, uh, we saw the cannons rolling in. Uh, and then Friday, ba-boom, all day, all day, into the evening, boom, boom, like I said, a quarter mile from us, so ground shaking, loud, and um, you ever had cannons go off by your house? Do you have a dog? Can you imagine what the dog thinks of the cannons? <coughs> so... We got the three guys. We got the three guys. Our our living situation is pretty... You can hear a lot of stuff. You can feel a lot of vibration. Um, so when they started shooting the cannons off... <laughs> Pip's wondering how the dogs did with cannons. Um, two out of three. Two out of three ain't bad, right? That's what they say. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three laid on the, on the floor and snored through it um usually when the cannon would go off walter would kind of huff and grumble like you know when somebody's snoring really loud and they almost wake up and they're like kind of lose their breath and they snore a little louder for a second and then they go back to their normal snoring rhythm when the cannons would go off that was kind of like what walter would do um norman didn't seem to even know it was going on when he was sleeping clyde on the other hand was about opposite of that. Clyde was nervous. He was pacing. He was standing next to us, completely beside himself. Friday, Corey was working, and she was sitting at her desk. And uh, basically, the way the table is that she uses for her desk, here's the tabletop, and the table leg goes diagonal. You can't really see the depth on that. Um, but diagonal from uh, from her front right to her her back left of the the tabletop, the 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 uh, leg kind of swing. It goes diagonal there. It's a, a fold up table, so it swings out about forty five degrees. So there's not a whole lot of room under there. Um, there's about enough room for Corey's legs. Clyde thought it was appropriate that a hundred and forty five pound dog also fit under there pushes her out of the way like kind of like scoots pushes nudges until she moved proceeds to climb under her table curl up and lay down scared shitless 145 pound hunting uh they were bred to be hunting dogs protection dogs uh guard dogs and he is fucking scared shitless he didn't really leave us. He was nervous all day. Good morning, John Palmer. Thanks for stopping. Um, yeah, it was kind of nuts. It was kind of nuts to see the difference between the dogs with the two just not even giving two shits about anything. And then the other one just beside himself. I would think that they would have picked up on each other like that. Uh, Clyde was going and laying next to the other dogs. Anything he could do to be next to somebody. Uh, I was like, holy shit. And we got these uh, these CBD or uh, these ch- calming shoes in the mail. <laughs> We're going to test them out. Um, and I, I, we were leaving for a little while. And I was like, maybe we should just dose him with shoes. And he'll be fine when we get back. And I was like, but we haven't given him any. We have no idea how he's going to react. And I'm not going to dose this dog with a bunch of chews and then leave the house for a couple hours. Especially with him under the stressful situation of the cannon fire to begin with. I figured I would come home and A, he'd be sprawled out on the bed enjoying life. Or B, he'd be running around the camper like a insane man uh, tearing shit apart busting through walls or doing something stupid like that. So we didn't do it. We, uh, we took off. He, when we got back, he seemed fine. 
He seemed fine. He seemed like he had actually kind of acclimated a little bit, maybe calmed down. But I don't think they had as much cannon fire on Saturday. I think the the, the majority of the cannon stuff is on Friday when they show up. They all they all they all show up and play with their cannons on the first day. So that was uh, that was Clyde's weekend, and unfortunately, he had to deal with that. And um, eh, once a year isn't bad. Once a year is not horrible. Um. So yeah. That was uh, that was the rendezvous that happens every year. I'm not planning on being in this spot for the next one. <laughs> Let's just say that I am uh, I am really, really getting excited to put together our next um, our next step, I guess, next phase of this whole thing. Um, working on things, rough structure done, um, working out details, can't really announce anything yet. I mean, I'm sure I could, but it's not time yet. It's not ready yet. <laughs> the, the oven timer hasn't gone off, even though we can smell the cookies baking, but I see the, I see the, I, I see the path and I'm, a, I, I'm excited guys. I'm getting really excited. I, it's how I made it through my day yesterday when everything was going crappy when everything was um, falling over, everything I touched was going to shit. I couldn't find what I needed. Uh, I kept just telling myself, this is the means to the ends. Get through this. Just get through it because it's not really that bad. It really wasn't. In the moment, I thought it was, I, I, I thought it was the worst that could be going on. And after the fact, after I calmed down, after I um, was able to get my videos done, after everything started to work out, after I made that sale at the gas station, I realized that things aren't that bad. They're really not. And things are about to get really good. Hard. Harder. I'm guessing. Extremely hard. A lot of work, uh, but it's been what we've been working for. It's what we've been, I don't want to say necessarily dreaming about, but the picture has been painted now. We didn't know what we were going to do when we took off. We didn't know how it was going to play out. We knew that we wanted to travel. We knew that we wanted to sit down for a year, and then we knew we wanted to make some decisions after that. And whether that was to travel more or to stick around or a hybrid of both or whatever, we just kind of went with it. And we were okay with figuring it out when it happened. What that did was open us up to opportunity. And we waited and worked and figured it out and the opportunities came. So that's cool. That's cool. Um, if you're working hard at something right now and it sucks, but you have a path, just keep going. If you don't have a path, if you have a general direction and you're okay with that, you'll probably find a path. You probably will. I don't know. I don't know. It worked for us. It worked for us. So I just kept thinking about that as my day was going to shit. <laughs> and it it was okay. It was okay. Every every so often as I would as I would move on to the next shitty thing, I would kind of pause and go, eh, it's in the short term. It's in the short term. And after I got done and sat down, I really, really stuck it in my head that anything in the short term right now is just that in the short term. And it's uh it's definitely about to get interesting. So I'm excited to share with you guys what's going on. I was I was looking at episode uh, episode numbers, and I don't know if I'll be able to wait till episode 700 because we're at what 677 right now. That's another 23 episodes. That's like four weeks, four and a half weeks. Uh, I was doing the math in my head, and I don't think it's going to be that long. But we definitely could do uh, episode 700 recap and path forward episode. So sometime between now and then, I'm guessing. 
I'm guessing. I got to work some stuff out. I got to talk to some people and make sure everything is kosher and then kind of roll with uh, roll with some announcements and some plans. So exciting things coming up. I, uh, I appreciate everyone that uh, that hangs out and listens to uh, my my uh, my ramblings. I'm hoping you have a good time and, and enjoy yourselves and laugh and and uh, you keep coming back. Uh, anyway, if you're watching over on the vertical feed, I appreciate that. We have a few watchers over there. We're, uh, we're using that to get a little more exposure to the show. So if you are over there um, watching today, yesterday, tomorrow, after the fact, if you're, you're catching this later, definitely hit that share. Share it with somebody you know. Uh, if you're on Noster, definitely leave a comment over there. And uh, let's grow that a little bit because um, that is definitely my my focus in the future i would like to uh, uh focus very heavily on noster i would like to eventually when i have a space to do it maybe do uh maybe do a, a noster only feed at some point um whether that be once a week in the evening or something i don't know still working on that but uh i think that's more of an after dark type of show and um I need to get to a spot where I won't keep Corey up all night if I uh, if I do that. So that's in the future. That's in the works. And and like I said, we got a huge project coming up. Huge, huge, really, guys. Uh, I think you guys will be excited. I think some of you end up probably participating. Whoa, <laughs> camera getting a little goofy. Um, yeah, excited, excited. So we're here. We're here for a while. Um, Oh, of course, right at the end. <laughs> I'm actually going to get that. I'm trying to get that fixed. We ordered something uh, last night. It won't be here till Saturday, but uh, we're going to do some stuff with the Starlink. We're going to try to get it out to a open spot and take care of those leaves that are coming in. Make it to uh, so we can make it through an hour long show without blipping out like that. All winter was fantastic with no leaves and a clear signal. Got to get it over into the opening. And uh, so we figured out how to do that. We we uh, we ordered up some supplies and um, yeah, so hopefully by next week, if you can muddle through with me until then, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday show might have some pauses, but hopefully we get things rectified over the weekend and roll into it on uh, next week with a clear and strong signal. Other than that, I appreciate everybody listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit that like, share, and subscribe. To return value for value, please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers, hitting up the lotsproject.com and checking out all the links and articles, affiliate codes, partnerships, and, and all the information over there. There is a ton of it, guys, if you want to just go meander and get yourself lost for a little while. Uh, also have spun up comfreyroots.com, C-O-M-F-R-E-Y, roots, R-O-O-T-S, comfreyroots.com, where you can get comfrey roots uh, cuttings to start uh, your comfrey patch, which is fantastic. If you don't know about comfrey, you really should look into it and pick some roots up from comfreyroots.com. Um, yeah, other than that, you can listen on any value for value platform like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Catch the live stream on Noster, run through zap.stream. Um, beyond that, we're going to wrap up for the day. Uh, if you're going to, if you got some time, you can switch over to Sensei Scrambling over on the West Coast. Good morning, Seattle, over on the Food Forest Farms. Uh, Food Forest Farms YouTube feed, I believe, is where that's going off in. Uh, He's got a couple of different names. We uh, we went through some issues with YouTube uh, YouTube not letting us talk. So I'm pretty sure it's on the Food Forest Farms web on the Food Forest Farms YouTube channel, guys. I, uh, I I hope you have an awesome Tuesday. I hope you get your tacos if that's what you're looking for, and uh, we will circle around and catch up with you again tomorrow. Smile.